Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, October 29th, 10.09 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at Rutgers Global Snow Lab data, which is showing all-time record snows in the Northern Hemisphere ever recorded in history. That means forever. Yeah, the overall weather situation over Canada now and over the next two weeks indicates Winter weather is poised just north of the eastern U.S., and if something doesn't change quickly, winter probably won't wait to hit Michigan, as well as the northern tier states. Departure from normal is off the charts for September, and the snow is not stopping, folks. Nor'easter bringing snow and power outages over the weekend. We reported on it. Break out your boots. It's snowing in the Cascades. Wax your skis. Break out your winter boots. Scour the mountain forecast. A white blanket has returned to the Cascades. That's right. Fresh snow is back. It's accumulating on Mount Hood, Santium, and Willamette Passes. There is even a snowy look at Mount Hood Meadows and Timberline Ski Area. Yeah, we're going to get to some footage. Boom! Mount Bachelor is the first boom of the day. And it's a Steve Keeley. Oops! There it is. Boom! Mount Bachelor picking it up and putting it down. That's Washington State. Here's a live stream from the West Village cam right now. Updated every 15 minutes. And that is Washington. And it is... uh. The, the cam 12 hours ago, there was some ground showing, but it is all white up there, kids. Cold and snow bumping out warm temps. Of course, they have to put that in there. That's the global warming narrative being kept. Yes, in the mainstream coming from Fox 31. Total shite out of Denver. I hope you've been enjoying the warm temperatures that are normal for Denver at this time of year. But on Tuesdays, the temperature will only reach the 40s, a drop of 30 to 40 degrees from Monday. Yeah, and we're talking accumulating snow, heavy snow. We'll get to it in just a moment. First snow of the season slows traffic across South Central Alaska. Snow covered the drives for parts of Anchorage. And what do they have to say? They got nothing to say. All right, thank you, Howie. Well, we okay, Howie. We'll get to you. <coughs> Bear with us. Here's the snowfall totals through Wednesday night. Heavy snow moving down the Rockies. Heads up Canada. Look at the amount of snow over the next three days covering the entire Craton. That's going to be blowing south and the northern tier states are going to be experiencing extreme cold. New England, uh, I don't know if they forecast warm for you, but there is no chance in sight of that happening. Not with this snow cover. This is through the first week of November. Heavy snow across the northern Craton. Check Canada. Over 90% snow cover by November 8th with over four feet of snow and snowpack building heavy up in the northern Rockies. Down in the southern tier, it doesn't look like they'll be spared, but we're going to get the majority of the snow just over the next three days. Take a look at northern New Mex. Towel ski area is buried. Ow! Oh! You fucking fraud. Man, that guy's going to be hiding. Have you heard? 75% of Venice is totally fluxed, and we're totally going to show it to you. And you can even hear it. Bello, bello. Take a look at this. Can you imagine if this is what you did regularly? This is the commute. Totally insane. Totally floods. Has nothing to do with sea level rise and everything to do with increased flooding, cosmic ray nucleation, and insanity across the planet. Seismic update.
We've had some major rockers here, especially just kicking off a 6.1 in New Zealand, one of the largest quakes in this region in a while, hitting land. I have no reports because it happened as I was making the video, unfortunately. But we do have a seismic uptick with multiple six magnitudes, including a 6.3 kicking off earlier this morning on Drake's Passage. So we're going to be watching the shock map. R Greece is continuing to rock. Other quakes of note in the moderate range. Nothing else of note except the New Zealand shocker at 227 kilometers, which means there could be a major quake coming up to the surface. So we're going to be watching this area closely. I'm sure the people in New Zealand who felt it are a little worried at this time. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Dukono, Sakurajima erupted today, as well as Reventador with volcanic ash. Langila added to the list. Popo, Krakatoa. And I didn't check that footage on Saku. We'll share it to you with tomorrow if it's worthy. I promise. NASA spacecraft just broke the record for the closest approach to the sun. We'll get to it. A supervolcano is a colossal eruption has been lying about its age. And we're talking about New Zealand. We just talked about that quake over there. Now, heads up. Taupo volcano. The most precise dating methods has pegged it happening in or close to 232 A.D. Now, why is that significant to us? Because in 232, there was a major drop-off during the Roman warm here in Maroon, straight down, dropping temperatures on the planet almost 2 degrees C, according to this direct comparison of the past four interglacials, which I've prepared for you. <clears throat> when does my work ever end? A lot of people out there don't believe what I'm saying because they say that the historical data in the past, uh, we're in an interglacial that is completely different than the past and we've been warm forever. Global warming is way different. No, in fact, what you're looking at is a direct comparison of the past for interglacials where three of them have done exactly the same thing. And what that means is that the line we're on, the black one, which is now, there is a sharp drop that we are living, which drops the temperature up to two degrees centigrade, depending on volcanic activity, cosmic rays, and other factors. And back during the Roman War and when the fall of the Roman Empire at 232, during a high cosmic ray time when temperature was dropping... Taupo exploded at VEI-7. Yeah. Which is what I am predicting to happen any moment as you're living. Links below. Arctic and Antarctic sea ice now at historic levels. Don't believe the hype. It's a sequel or a prequel to what is coming. It is often claimed that modern day sea ice changes are unprecedented and we're burning up. Ow! Unfortunately, there is record snow in the Northern Hemisphere. We just showed you the data. All-time record high snow totals in September. Ever recorded. Similar things are happening in the Southern Antarctic Ocean. As sea surface temperatures drop drastically from 1980 to present, guess what happens? Yeah, Sea ice extent increases exponentially. There is the graphic. That's southern hemisphere sea ice extent. Off the charts. And by 2016, it was record levels. You frauds. But they show you like a little data set of one of these little drop downs and say it's record sea lo ice loss. Doubt it. They are, they're not even talking about trends. So we're, go we're looking at big picture here. Big picture, kids. And the big picture is Arctic sea ice has been increasing. <laughs> increasing. In the Arctic as well. Oh, it's so insane. I don't even know how to show them the data physically, but they can come look at it. 
They can come look at it over here at the Danish Meteorological Institute, and they could pick up what we're putting down. That this year's sea ice for the last seven months has been in multi-decadal averages or well above it for several months. And I imagine this line to penetrate above the gray as we move into winter. What's happening in the Arctic is heavy, thick ice is blocking the Northwest passages. Record thickness here, all in the Northern regions. Some of these areas, including this region here I'm circling, have never seen ice this thick last over the summer. And now we're connecting across the entire Arctic before we hit winter here. Our predictions at the channel is that there is going to be an epic multi-year ice slab forming before your very eyes starting this year, where it will remain red in this entire region throughout next summer. And the Northwest Passage will be desperately impassable next year. Impossible to be passable. Whew. That's a, that's a Steve Keeley boom. Heads up, dumb people taking selfies of their stupidity. Yes. Did you hear a NASA spacecraft just broke the record for the closest approach to the sun? And it's not your illegitimate sun. It's the one that controls the climate. Not the fake sun or the sun simulator. But a NASA sun studying spacecraft just entered the record books. In April of 1976, the German American Helios 2 probe came within 26.55 million miles of the sun. And this baby has already broke through that. In fact, in 2025, the Parker Solar Probe will fly a mere 3.83 million miles from the sun. And here we are live, live. We have live footage behind the probe somehow. I know. Isn't that amazing how we can do that at the channel? Our budget is unlimited. Yeah. So here we are live behind the Parker Solar Probe in 2025. 3.65 million miles from the surface. Totally checking it out. It is gorgeous. And it's naked. <laughs> Put something on, son. You son of a... Son of a son. Yeah, there we are live again. Thanks to technology, Elon Musk, NASA, and the powers that be, we can see. Nothing but white scream. Oh, if you're in the stock market, you're fucked. Yeah, the Dow swings more than 900 points during a wild day of trading. And here we're looking at live after hours trading, which I was checking out all weekend as the world markets were selling off. And it is going to be bad tomorrow. Very bad. <laughs> and this may continue. If you're not already starting to prepare, your money is worth less and less every day we move forward into this event until the adjustment has taken place. And when it's adjusted, you'll be fluxed totally. So start buying now, preparing for your future. Are you ready? I doubt it. Are you ready for LeakCon 2019? You better be. Because we're now connecting. Denver, Colorado, May 18th and 19th. Secure online registration now. Use coupon code BOOM until the new year for 20% off. Here are the confirmed speakers and presenters. Rex Bear Leak Project, David Dubine, ADAPT 2030, me, Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Greg Allison, NASA Insider, Christian Westbrook, Ice Age Farmer, Lee Wheelbarger, 9-11 Truth, Thor News will be there. Thor News Channel. Hemp Lucid will be there. In fact, Hemp Lucid will be providing all of our VIPs a new experience. Yeah, they're going to allow our VIPs to experience life again. You know why? Because all the VIPs are going to get some Hemp Lucid tucked right into their special VIP package that we hand them. Friday night. At the meet and greet. The venue will be announced later this week. Stay tuned. Those interested in securing limited table space, email me at Oppenheimer Ranch. There'll be links below. Interested speakers can also email me. Tell me what you got to say. 
I will be discussing cosmic climate catastrophe and the great year, sacred geometry, and the hidden history that is being held from you. If you don't know about my history as a scientist and what I studied, I'll leave you links to this cosmic climate catastrophe part one, which we have at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project in our video library, which will give you a primer to what I will be speaking on. But the topics I will be discussing at LeakCon 2019 will be brand new and cutting edge. This is all 30 years of my studies coming together in one place. And that's a boom. Selfie much? Steve! Oh, it's too late. Anyway. So, I implore you. Hemp lucid. Do it. I recommend the whole plant CBD water soluble. Um... Any of them are whole plant extracts. So no matter what product you buy, it's coming from the same extraction process, except for the nano. They run that through another filter. But get to know your CBD. Come to LeakCon 2019. I'm going to tell you right now, the venues we're looking at are very private. There's going to only be a limited number of tickets. Based on how many tickets are sold right now, the, this conference will be sold out five months before we start. And that's a heads up. Boom. In my talk, I'll be discussing this graph specifically. <coughs> then this comes from all the high resolution ice core data worldwide that we can glean for the last million years. And what it shows is that the processional cycle, the great year, the interglacial periods all react in the same way. This is, has a cosmic forcing mechanism, multivariate. It's just not one thing. It's driven by our sun, but it's cosmogenic in nature. So you're talking planetary alignments, you're talking sun output, you're talking cosmic rays from outside of our galaxy even, potentially. In the, only in the last 10 or 15 years have we start to think about actually what is forcing the mechanism. We can see the spikes in the valleys, we can see the patterns repeating. We can claim we know what the forcing mechanism is, but there are so many and every single year that we study, we uncover more forcing mechanisms. So climate cyclicity is very difficult to unravel. But we can tell you with beyond a shadow of a doubt is that the forces are external to you. You have nothing to do with it. In fact, you are so insignificant that the sharp drop you are living on is about to kill most of you. And that's a boom. 